Crown is able to regulate the season based on conservation. Yes. We are making sure that we're doing that in a way that is 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 fair and equitable to every all the harvesters. Uh, you know, I mean, the the stocks have to be sustainable for the long term. So that's the fisheries minister uh, on this big decision. This is a loss for the indigenous fishers. Uh, in Nova Scotia and around the country, but the battle is far from over. So this is this controversial decision that the Department of Fisheries, as you just heard the minister say, that Indigenous people can only fish in a commercial season. But remember, there is a 1999 Supreme Court decision called the Marshall Decision that didn't specify that. It only specified that First Nations have a right to make a, quote, moderate livelihood. And that's why the Subanakadi Chief Mike Sack has rejected the approach to moderate livelihood fisheries as defined by the federal government. So what happens now? Let's find out. Chief Mike Sack is with us. Chief Sack, always a pleasure to have you back on the program. Uh, I, I want your reaction to the fact that uh, um, the government has defined that, that, that your people and First Nations can only fish in a commercial season to make a moderate livelihood. What do you make of it? Yeah, Evan, thanks for having me. Um, to me, that, that's just a very unfair statement. And, and she goes off of conservation, but there's never been any talk of conservation issues. And uh, we take out a million pounds of lobster, they take out 60 million. So if there's conservation, they need to look at the season um, that is coming out. But as far as we're concerned, um, we have that right to fish. We can't send boats out in the winter months when the season is. You know, the last Monday in November until May 1st or April 31st, um, it's just comparing a wheelbarrow and a dump truck. You can't do it. We, there's just no way we can fish in those time frames. Why not? Why, just, just explain to people why not. Why can commercial fishers do it and Subanakadi fishers can't? Most of our, our crews have a boat, you know, a $20,000 boat that's 25 feet long and, and 10 feet wide. The commercial right. industry, you get a million dollar vessel, um, 50 feet long and 30 feet wide. There's a big difference and you just can't compare at all. What do you say when commercial fishers say, "Hey, we got to the, the stocks are fragile. They're fishing out of season. They're not. It's not even a good product. The lobster shells are are, are soft then anyway. So don't do it then, and everyone can make a living in commercial season. What's the? That's the practical side. I want to get to the legal in a minute. But what's the response to the the commercial fishers response there? That's a. Uh the season was set out by the economy when they can get the most money for their product and get EI for the rest of it. Um, a couple hours south in Maine, they fish all year round. There's no season. Off the coast of Nova Scotia, there's offshore license that fish all year round. So they cannot go on at molten season and such, right? Like our conservation measures go further than DFO regulations do. Okay, so, so as I understand, the Supreme Court in 1999 had something called the Marshall Decision that allowed Subanakity and other uh, Mi'kmaq fishers and others to, ha to make a, quote, moderate livelihood. Do you believe the decision today by DFO violates the spirit of the law? Yeah, 100 percent. And I um, all do res like all respect for Donald Marshall and the poor guy should never have had to go to court in the first place. But then they uh, they dropped the charges. They deemed him, you know, um, innocent. And then they come back uh, months later and they have a Marshall too, which try to put limits on our, our livelihood and try to box us in. Go back to the treaties, which Donald Marshall won based upon, there's no limit. Uh, they cannot limit us like that. And, and Minister Jordan, to think that she can step in and prevent us, it's uh, another thing coming for her. Okay, what is the other thing coming? What happens now, Chief Sack? So we're, uh, the Nova Scotia Chiefs all get together today, uh, an emergency chiefs meeting. And, um, you know, we have unity. We're all going to move together. We all are there to fight for our right, and we're going to exercise that right. And, um, you know, we're planning for our fisheries to be bigger and better, and um, we'll be there in the spring to fish. And any more hauling of our gear by DFO will be infringing on our rights, and they will be held accountable. Okay, I just want to be clear. You're going to still fish. You're going to still fish yeah. outside the commercial. Your, your people are still going to fish outside of the commercial season. And if a DFO boat comes and says you're breaking the law and they seize your stuff, where are we headed here, Chief Sack? Well, we're, uh, that's going to be a lawsuit against DFO, you know, for infringing on our rights and also uh, harassment of our people. And uh, they got to realize what we're doing as well is like um, our community, the poverty is we're trying to bring our people out of poverty. We're not trying to get rich off it. So it's um, a minister can't leave her comfy house 
and try to decide what's right for our community and what's wrong. Um, I don't even know why she'd be trying to do that. So your bottom line is disappointment today, but there's unity among the chiefs. You're going to still fish. Disappointment, unity. Um, I thank Minister Jordan for bringing us together. We're stronger than ever, and we're going to fish 100%. Okay, Chief Saka, you know how much I appreciate you coming on the show and making time, and you know we'll follow this closely. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you.